Since I was staying at Taksim Square, my Istanbul videos start more or less from this area. Karakoy is one of the beautiful neighborhoods which is worth to explore. I love wandering around Istanbul streets and today my way leads to Topkapi Palace, passing by Galata Tower and Galata Bridge, as well as visiting Grand Bazaar on the way. The weather in winter is changing frequently in Istanbul. During my two months stay I experienced basically everything – snowfall, rain, sunny and gloomy days. Karakoy has been a port area since Byzantine times, after the reconquest of the city from the Latin state in the 13th century. The Byzantine emperor granted Junaid's merchants permissions to settle and do the business. Galata Tower, the highest point, is the most substantial relic of the old world enclave. Anywhere in Istanbul you can find small stalls where you can get a freshly squeezed pomegranate juice, my favorite one, to boost your immune system. The Column of Constantine is the oldest Constantinian monument to survive in Istanbul, built in 328 AD and located near Grand Bazaar. The Grand Bazaar is one of the largest and oldest covered markets in the world with 61 covered streets and over a thousand shops. It's often regarded as one of the first shopping malls of the world. The market was built in 1460, shortly after the Ottoman conquest of Constantinople, and it was part of a broader initiative to stimulate economic prosperity in Istanbul. Thank you. By 1950s, the Grand Bazaar was bursting with everything, from jewelry to silk and traditional copperware to exotic imports. But then came the tourists and many local merchants were displaced by souvenirs and carpet shops. Topkapi Palace, translated as a Canon Gate Palace. It's a large museum complex and library in Fatih district of Istanbul. During Greek and Byzantine times, the Acropolis of the ancient Greek city of Byzantium stood here. From the 1460s to the completion of Dalmabachi Palace in 1856, it served as administrative center of Ottoman Empire and was the main residence of its sultans. The construction was ordered by the Sultan Mehmed the Conqueror six years after the conquest of Constantinople. Mehmed's original layout, which consisted of four consecutive courtyards surrounded by high walls, remains. Each courtyard served different purposes and was separated by a gate. The second courtyard, also called Divan Square, was the administrative center of the palace. The treasury was used to finance the administration of the state, where is now an impressive collection of Ottoman and European arms and armor is displayed. The famous Topkapi dagger is adorned with many smaller sized diamonds and features three enormous emeralds on the hilt and a watch set into the pommel. It was created as a gift to the Shah of Persia. The library was built on orders of Ahmed III in 1719 for use by officials of the royal household. It contained books on theology, Islamic law and similar books on scholarship in Ottoman, Turkish, Arabic and Persian. The library collection consisted of more than 3,500 manuscripts. The new library houses a unique collection containing more than 20,000 manuscripts both Islamic and non-Islamic. The collection also boasts a wide array of available maps not found anywhere else in the world. The 
The palace kitchens were built when the palace was first constructed in the 15th century. They consist of 10 dome buildings. Imperial kitchen, harem, outer service section of the palace, kitchens, beverages kitchens, confectionery kitchen, creamery, storerooms and rooms for the cooks. They were the largest kitchens in the Ottoman Empire. Food was prepared for about 4,000 people, and the kitchen staff consisted of more than 800 people. The kitchens included dormitories, bath, and a mosque for the employees, most of which disappeared over the time. Apart from exhibiting kitchen utensils, today the buildings contain a silver gift collection, as well as a large collection of porcelain. Chinese porcelain is among the finest porcelain collections in the world. Records indicate that by the 18th century, the palace collection had 16,600 pieces of Chinese porcelain, ranges from 10th to 18th centuries. The collection also includes around 5,000 European pieces. Chinese Saladon porcelain was valued by the sultans for its beauty, but also because it was reputed to change the color if touched by poisoned food. The Chamber of the Sacred Relics houses what are considered to be the most sacred relics of the Muslim world. The cloak of Muhammad, two swords, a bow, one tooth, a hair of his beard, the battle sabers, an autographed letter and other relics which are known as the sacred trusts. When the sultans lived here, the rooms were opened only once a year for the imperial family to pay homage to the memory of the Prophet on the 15th day of the holy month of Ramadan. Now any visitor can see these items and many Muslims make a pilgrimage for this purpose. The audience chamber, also known as the Chamber of Petitions, is a little kiosk where important officials and foreign ambassadors were brought to conduct the high business of state. The emperor was seated on a slightly elevated throne completely covered with a gold cloth, inspected the ambassador's gifts and offerings. The imperial harem, which literally means forbidden or private, occupied one of the sections of the private apartments of the Sultan. It contained more than 400 rooms. The Sultan supported as many as 300 concubines in the harem. Upon entering the harem, the girls would be schooled in Islam and in Turkish culture and language, as well as the arts of makeup, dress, comportment, music, reading, writing, embroidery, and dancing. They then entered a meritocracy, first as ladies in waiting to the Sultan's concubines and children, then to the mother of Sultan, and finally, if they were particularly attractive and talented, to the Sultan himself. The Sultan was allowed by Islamic law to have four legitimate wives. Ruling the harem was the Sultan's mother, who often owned large landed estates on her own name and controlled them through black eunuch servants. Able to give orders directly to the Grand Vizier, her influence on the Sultan, on his wives and concubines, and on matters of states was often profound. The harem consists of a series of buildings and structures connected through hallways and courtyards. Every service team and hierarchical crew presiding in the harem has its own living space clustered around the courtyard. There was no trespassing beyond the gates of the harem, 
except for the Sultan, the Queen Mother, the Sultan's consorts and favorites, the princess and the concubines, as well as the eunuchs guarding the harem. We are leaving palace through the same gates as we entered, passing by Ayirini, an Eastern Orthodox church. It's the oldest known church in the city and the only Byzantine church in Istanbul that was never converted into a mosque, as it was used as an arsenal for storing weapons until the 19th century. The Ayirini today operates as a museum and a concert hall.